Welcome to Digital Asset News Clips, where we take the advancements in cryptocurrency and digital assets and try to break them down into bite-sized pieces. So today we're going to cover another project, which uh, shows to me a ton of promise, and it's called Silo. And uh, Silo has been around for quite some time, if you don't know it. I didn't know it. It's been around since 2017. I had never heard of it myself. And uh, I think it's just one of those projects that uh, has a lot going for it, but just nobody knows about it. So this is what it all is. Uh, you can go to the website. I'm going to link that in the description below, silo.io. And uh, it says, and it expands on what it is, and it's not going to make much sense to you right now, but hold on, I'll get to it. It says, Silo is an ecosystem made up of digital consumer wallet software, applications, infrastructure, and developer tools to usher in a world of smart money. And I'm going to use a term right now. It's going to really sum up everything for Silo. It's, uh, it's a super app. And that's the best way I can say it. Just think of this as a super app and you'll get it a lot faster. So uh, the first thing it talks about is smart money, end-to-end -end smart money solution for governments, businesses, and consumers. That really doesn't excite me whatsoever because there are so many different things out there that can do that. I have no care about that right now. But this right here really puts it in perspective. Silo Smart Wallet and the Silo Network. Silo Smart Wallet, it's secure chats, calls, and crypto assets all running on the Silo Network. And the network is community-run Silo nodes, power encrypted communication storage dApps and payments, super app. So what are we talking about here? So we talk about the Smart Wallet and really the Smart App and really the super app, this is what it is. It's a digital wallet and a private messenger. And when you think about different projects that are out there, you have to ask yourself, which one of these projects actually do something? Not what they say they're going to do, but they actually do something and have a working product and people are actually using it. Well, in Silo, this is what you get right now today, and you can download it and use it like I have on the App Store and the Google Play. Here's what it is. So you can store, send, and share your crypto so you can actually pay for things right away. Just like in America, we have uh, Venmo and Zeal or Zelle. Uh, it's the same thing which you do with crypto. It makes it quite easy. Uh, you can actually uh, communicate in an encrypted way. And what's great about this is that, like, I always thought WhatsApp was encrypted. It says it's encrypted. But here's the thing. WhatsApp is uh, also owned by Facebook. And you know what they like to do with data? Steal all of it. So there really is... And I had to talk to Aaron McDonald, and uh, we're going to talk to him in a bit. Uh, he's one of the project leads and, and one of the co-founders of, uh, of uh, Silo. He says, nothing's really encrypted, Rob. He goes, that's what we do, and that's what we're trying to do. I'm like, oh, I'll be damned. So type like no one is watching. Participate in a global decentralized network. Silo nodes are the foundation of a global network. And support for over 100 cryptocurrencies that you can just send and swap and everything else on your private messenger app and wallet, which is pretty cool. And then it says our point of difference and end encryption, Web 3.0 made easy. And don't be alarmed when you think about Web 3.0 to make it like it's very confusing. Think of it this way. Uh, the web is controlled right now just by a bunch of ton of servers. Like Google has a bunch of warehouses with a bunch of, bunch of computers and that, that has all the data and everything else. That's the original web, right? Essentially, servers. Web 3.0, instead of taking uh, just one huge warehouse or warehouses with a bunch of servers, they just decentralize it with a bunch of nodes just like we have with the uh, uh, Bitcoin nodes or any kind of nodes that you have, in this case, silo nodes that people can run. And that's where the uh, internet is stored. So you really can't shut that down that's really Web 3.0 in a nutshell. And you can make uh, payments social. So um, let's just take a look at the app. Huh? I think that's going to make a lot more sense than me just rambling on about it. So here's my phone. Let me pick this up. This is my wife. Hey. Let me go back. So here, here we have uh, b -b 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 Silo. In the bottom left-hand corner, you're going to see Silo. So we're going to click on that, open this puppy up. And then, of course, there is a part over here where it says chats in the lower left-hand corner. And when you click on chats, chats, I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, uh, wipe out that, uh, that message right there so you don't see it. That's from my wife. Anyhow, um, you'll notice that I only have one person here because when you go to like a, a WhatsApp, it'll take all of your contacts and stick them into your phone and then, and then you're like, oh, this is great, this is easy. Well, because of that easiness and, and that greatness, that's how your data is uh, sent over uh, to WhatsApp. And with this one, you have to actually individually invite people. You can invite a new contact or create a conversation. Let's, uh, let's invite a contact and see it's gonna give you a link right here. Let's share the invitation. I'm gonna share it with my man, Alex Mascioli, see what he's doing. And bam, there it's right there. Join me on Silo, blah, 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 blah. 
and it allows you to download this. And now you have an encrypted connection between two people. That's pretty much how it works. Super simple, right? So that's that part. Then you can actually have people scan the code. You can scan the code. And then here's your address book, which I'm not going to click on. All right. So that's the first part. Wallet. Let's unlock my wallet. One, two, three, four, five. Just kidding. And this is where we can store all our cryptocurrency, right? And I've got a whopping 0 0.005 Bitcoin. I'm a baller. Uh, I've got the silo token. We'll get that in a second. Tezos, CPay, Sends, and then you can also add account. Any kind of ERC20 token you can use right here. And uh, I think at some point, uh, maybe they're going to look into Cardano. We'll see about that. So yeah, I can send, receive, and also I can buy crypto on here. How does that work? Well, I click on buy. Uh, let's buy some Ether. Uh, yeah, Ethereum. So it's going to send me to MoonPay, and I can buy it and put it on there. But I really don't have to use that. If I want to receive any kind of, look at this stuff, geez Louise. I can put it all on here just by uh, getting the address, and off you go. Uh, so yeah, and uh, that's pretty much how it is. If you're uh, curious about like how does that work as far as like transferring funds, as far as like cryptocurrency, uh, I just did a, a video which talks about the MetaMask wallet and how you can use that. And it's the same type of thing. So we got that wallet scanner. We can, if anybody wants to put on like, like a QR code or something like that, we can uh, put the QR code in front of us and just uh, grab it. Discover all the new features right there. And then here's your profile. Hey, there I am. And... Uh, you can put this is one thing i want to show you so you can buy silo but it says protect your account see right here it says protect your account so you never lose access they're giving you your private keys right here so if you click on the show my secret phrase when you have control of your private keys it is your crypto so everything that we just put into this wallet you control the bank still controls it's not everything else it's in this app and again this is what's great about silo and how it all works. So that's the first part of it. And that's really one I want to show you for that. Let me get out of there. Let's continue with Silo because first of all, well, great, I have, a, I have an app, uh, I can message and it's decentralized, that's great. Why do I need a Silo token? Why do, why do I need that? That doesn't make any sense. So here's the answer to that. I think the answer, first of all, before I get into that, uh, let's back up. Let's talk about the roadmap and how much this project has actually grown in a short amount of time. So this started in 2017. It is now June 17, 2021. It's been around for a long time. It's been battle tested and seems to be working out pretty well. And it started in Q3, 2017. Then you had the Silo Network was completed in Q1, 2019. And then from there, they had the smart wallet release, which is the wallet we just saw. And of course, the private messenger app. That was in Q3, 2019, okay? Within that quarter, they got 50,000 users to join the Silo Smart Wallet. 50,000, that's pretty good. So here's some white papers. It was enlisted on KuCoin. There was uh, some type of Centri Pay and Coca-Cola, some type of marketing function. So they partnered with BitBNS, Web3 browsers, very nice. Uh, also listed on Gate.io in that short amount of time. Uh, also, they integrated with Tezos, keep going. And then, uh, let's see, Silo Smart Wallet migrated to Silo Network version 2, okay. Public release, buy crypto features in Q1 2021. Where else are we? And NFT support in Q2. Q2, let me see something. I'm missing something here. There. Sorry about that. This might look a little bit funny, but I have to make sure I get this right. So where did I say it? 50,000 users joined the, joined the wallet in Q3, 2019. In just two quarters, they doubled their users as 100,000 users joined the smart wall. That was in Q1, 2020. Let's go forward. In Q2 of 2020, they doubled again to 200,000 users. And then I think, is there one more? They released the crypto tracker. You can track all your cryptos. They can stake on Q2 2021, which is right about now, I believe. And then some more things planned. This will be a great question, actually, to, when I get the guys on to see what their user base is now. Because to double and then triple and then quadruple in that short amount of time uh, is saying something. So that is the roadmap of what's going on. Let's talk about, first of all, the token. Why do we need a token? I mean, we have an app. That's some, that seems good enough. I don't think there's anything else we need. Here's the thing. 
and I'm going to uncover these as we go. So, the popular mainstream networks, we're just talking about WhatsApp, currently available offer free services but make billions from selling their users' data. Your, your data gets old, my data gets old, why can't we control that? These centralized establishments are forever digging for new ways to exploit trust, shill advertising, and profit from the user's information. I thought I was the king of the shills, but apparently not. Then, running network hardware infrastructure costs human time, resources, and electricity. To remunerate these essential costs, we have the silo token. The silo token's unique layer two off blockchain probabilistic micropayment system makes this all possible. On top of that, the silo token is used for payments between users, smart wallet upgrades, add-ons, DAP payments, and purchases in the real world. So essentially, silo token is what is used to run this whole network. It is also for governance, it is also to, uh, for nodes to get paid for all the different data that has to be stored in there. Because, I mean, think about it like things like, like Filecoin as they store all these different uh, uh, structures and, and data in these little pockets of the uh, decentralized network. Well, you need nodes to do that. And nodes cost a little bit of money for people to run. So they uh, pay for that with the silo token. Also, the silo token is the payment system, which you can use right inside your wallet. So to me... When I look at all these things that are going on, I think that this is just, it's a super app and it's got a long way to go. And it's just interesting to, to why it hasn't blown up yet. That's the big thing. So uh, as far as the tokenomics, 10% of the plant platform is uh, incentivization. 10% goes to the team. 12.5% is locked in the TGE, which has already passed. It's already been out. 20% unlocked token G GTE, 25% seller protocol, and 22.5% DN3 chain. Let's talk to the guys about the tokenomics and see exactly where we're at right now because this is what will be interesting, I think. Let's take a look at CoinGecko right quick and take a look just at where Silo is listed at number 845. What I might call a low cap gem. It's not even a penny. It's 0 0.004 cents. The market cap is a whopping 11 million, geez, 11 million dollars. That's the, that's the market cap. 24 hour trading is $105,000. <laughs> and the circulating supply is 10 billion, which they have an ambitious project, so I could see why that is. And the question is, why is this so low? If it actually works, it actually does something, and it actually has utility. That's the big question. And sometimes, you just have those fantastic restaurants right on the corner that nobody goes to because nobody hears about it. And I think this is one of those times we should be paying attention. And finally, I want to finish up with a couple of things. First of all, the overview. The silo network, decentralized communication and storage network with the performance and scalability to support millions of users. Instead of centralized cloud servers, silo users create this decentralized silo network by running silo nodes, which we just talked about. Let me see. All messages, voice calls, video calls, and file transfers on the silo platform are end-to-end -end encrypted. Each message is encrypted with new keys. Interesting. Silo nodes exist to help users connect directly, store encrypted data. And then lastly, silo offers a layer two off blockchain probabilistic micropayment system, which we talked about with silo. Microservices are paid uh, with off-chain tickets, providing very low transaction fees and limitlessly scalable transaction volume. And that's pretty much the bulk of it right there. Oh, this was interesting. Lastly, build your own. Develop your own decentralized communication, storage, or micropayment application for you or your business. I'll have to ask the guys about that. And that is the big stuff. Now, the big other thing is I always talk about invest in people. So if you want to find out uh, as far as Silo, I will link this in, in the description below. But this is the LinkedIn page for everybody who works at Silo, which is pretty good. They just have it all right there. Right now, I'm not going to go through all this, but I want to know about Felix. I want to know about Aaron. And I want to know about Ben Jordan. And who else? Dorian would be a good one. Illustrator. Director. I want to have these guys answer this, what their experience is, what they've done in the past, and where they see things going. So let's jump right in and talk to a couple of guys from Silo. Okay, everybody. So we, I kind of broke it down as to what Silo does, what it is, uh, the app itself, uh, why things run, and as I call it, uh, really is a super app. So 
to answer some more questions, I had to bring in people much smarter than myself. Uh, I've got uh, Aaron McDonald. Uh, he's one of the co-founders of uh, Silo. And then uh, we've also got um, <laughs> Dorian Johannik, and he's also one of the co-founders. So gentlemen, thanks for coming on. I really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thanks, man. It's really Good. cool to be on the show. Fantastic. Love that shirt. Yeah. Love that shirt. Well, I love your NFT background, Aaron. Like, like we were talking about. I mean, I mean, my background's okay, but I don't have a spinning tree, and that puts me at a disadvantage. <laughs> but I'll be okay for it. All right. So, so let's let let's get in the meat and potatoes. First of all, I'm a big believer in teams. I invest in people. So I know you guys have a nice little uh, uh, snippet there uh, on LinkedIn for all your 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 players that are in. Uh, silo, but just break it down. Tell me a little bit about your background and what makes your team strong uh, in bringing Silo to the to the forefront of cryptocurrency. Yeah, 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 of course. You want, me, you want me to jump on, or you want to jump on on this one, Aaron? We've got no. You go, Dorian. Cool, cool. Yeah, so we got we got two components. We've got a, a really solid core team, but we've also got a really solid network um, of periphery advisors that are doing really really cool stuff around the place. So obviously. Um, the core team are based down here in Auckland, New Zealand. Um, a bunch of developers that are heavy into the, um, the blockchain development space and the back end, um, doing really innovative stuff. Um, you've got myself um, that comes from a digital consulting background. Um, sort of, I, I dabbled around myself a lot in um, helping companies market through the, the Facebooks of the world previously. So um, the, um, the pitfalls of those from the inside in terms of what was happening with the data capture, you know, the privacy elements, all that, um, decided, look, we need to really find out how to rip out that middleman centralized layer, enable people to connect direct like they do in the real world as much as possible um, and start solving those problems. Um, so we originally linked up with um, the, one of the original architects of LimeWire. Do, do you recall that service? Um, it was like Naps to LimeWire music OG um, Peter yes, Gear. I'm old. Things. I remember these things. LimeWare was like <laughs> one of the, one of the first things that you could actually like download a bunch of stuff, and it was like underground. It was really cool. Oh yeah, like Napster. I remember this stuff. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so we we linked up with um, Adam Adam Fisk, and he helped us build out our version one. So it's just purely P 2 P. Um, got our version one out. It was it worked. It was functional, but um, there was an issue with um, competing against the mainstream apps and the fact that if you weren't both, both online at the same time, you couldn't connect the dots um, and establish those connections. So as we we're going through that journey, um, you know, we started looping in um, some other people to really bring the commercial components and delivery together. Um, yes. You know, Aaron, Aaron's in the mix there on that one. And as we moved along the journey, we've brought a whole range of other advisors on board that are working on really interesting things across blockchain, across NFT, um, across baseline decentralized technologies. So it's sort of a, a group effort built off of the core development team. Uh, we've got a, a bunch of really stable, stable key guys there. I mean, uh, Aaron, I don't know if you want to drop a few names in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think, I think um, like to give a bit of background, I joined. Um, the silo journey after their version one and um, I come from my history is in telecommunications so I've been a, a telecommunications engineer you know starting 20 years ago and um, building up from doing literally digging digging the ground to lay cables through to network architect um, in the wireless and um, IP networking space and so I understand networks and communications really well. And I could see that the silo team were building the next generation of how a telecommunications network would roll out. And the, they had a little bit of a missing ingredient there. They'd done all the kind of peer-to-peer -peer encryption and that, that side of things. But there was a few functions that couldn't be um, totally um, disconnected from a centralized service at that point. And that was quite early on in the... Um, in the blockchain space too, you know, we're talking three, four years ago now, yeah. um, but we could see a roadmap to taking all of those functions, um, all of the, the loopholes that are even in some of the other big um, private centric, uh, privacy centric apps like Telegram or Signal and decentralizing those things using, using blockchain technology. Um, so we bought a team around uh, the silo table who been working with blockchain a bit longer, integrated those those um, those two teams, so awesome communications experience, the telco network knowledge and the blockchain knowledge to create this new platform for communications and data sharing. Gotcha. So that would be like like I, I see on, on your LinkedIn profiles uh, for the whole the whole group, 
you've got like uh, uh, Felix Schlitter. He's the, uh, the, the CTO. So yeah. I'm, I'm kind of going down, down that route of maybe he's probably one, one of the, the main key ingredients for the blockchain factor, I'm guessing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so Felix is our, um, we, we cherry picked him out of Germany. Um, he's, a, he's, he's an insane on the, um, on the tech side. So he's <laughs> probably what we call our pure script, um, our, our pure script genius. Um, so he, we butted out um, from him on that side to, to start really building out a core team around him on the delivery. Um, and he really dives into the nuts and bolts um, on the on the baseline level, um, and then it comes up to our to our mid tier mid tier developers um, and front end UX guys from there. But he's um, he, he's definitely a fundamental element in the mix. You know what? See, this this is what makes sense. Remember in 2017 we had the ICO craze, and it was just yeah. either a bunch of developers that would get together and go, "We got an idea," or it was a bunch of marketers and one developer go, "We got an idea," and then people would put it out, but it really wouldn't couldn't flesh out because you didn't have all the pieces of the puzzle. And that's why I, I try to find these projects that have everything going on. Somebody who in yeah. business, business development, CTO, marketing, and advisors. And it seems like yeah. you guys kind of have that going on, uh, especially with what's going on. So talk to me about um, marketing and then some of the advisors, because we, we, we've touched on it briefly, but what's going to happen moving forward to actually get this message out of silo and why, you know, uh, what's the next evolution? Yeah, I think that's a really important point. Um, you know, the, the silo team um, are very strong technically, and it's been something that, um, you know, they've been working in this um, communication space now for the eight years or so, um, Dorian. And, um, and that's, you know, and the experience beyond that in people's previous work. But actually one of the really cool things, and you'll notice this when you use the application, is they're very strong on design and yeah, user experience. Yeah. And so you see a lot of um, blockchain projects, um, they have some really good protocol engineering, um, but they don't necessarily think about the end user. And Silo's mission is to make this stuff super simple for anyone to get into, for your grandma to get into. And so um, they do a lot of work in uh, understanding how that user experience can be improved. So you can go in and onboard into Silo without actually having to know anything about crypto. And even in the back end design, um, the way that they obscure some of the decentralized mechanics, so you don't have to understand gas, for example, to use the DAP, you know, these yeah. barriers that, that keep coming up in terms of the adoption. So that's the foundation. And that's what the team's been working on um, to, to get something that scales so that you can go and, go and push harder on the users get that scaling right, test that with the half a million users you've got so far, know that those things work, get all the infrastructure right, get the user experience right, and then you go and do the push. If you look at the advisor side, there's some really, you know, um, marketing geniuses, I would say, in that space. I mean, a really great example is Tyler, um, Tyler Ward, who's um, been advising the project now for more than three years. Um, Tyler's everything touches Tyler t it turns to gold um, and he's just got this super, super brain for figuring out how to grow pack and to pull communities together and to, um, and to uh, innovate in the customer, you know, kind of customer marketing space. Um, okay. And so that we, we kind of tap into those skills. I think you can, you're going to see a lot of collaborations coming um, and now that that platform's set and kind of ready to go and you've seen a little bit of this with the the tezos onboarding um yeah. but now we're ready to kind of really push down that collaborations path and um, get more functionality inside of the application so that users have a, a reason to join but also a reason to keep using it yeah i mean like when i first saw it my son actually told me about it and i was like i don't know what that yeah. is and he's and he's like no no it's great you gotta try it. i'm like yeah that's it's all great and then of course when I use it, I'm like, wow, this is actually like a working product, like it actually yeah. works and I can use it and it does things. That's amazing. And when, yeah. I take, when I took a little deep dive, I'm like, I don't understand why this isn't uh, going farther because it is a super app. So, okay. Yeah. yeah makes, makes a lot more sense. And then, uh, so the team looking good, we go there. Let's talk real quick about the tokenomics because on the website, let me share my screen so you can see what I see. So the tokenomics, when I was doing the uh, uh, initial uh, video, I actually walked everybody through on my phone what the app looks like and how it all works. Very slick design. But talk to us real quick about the tokenomics of what is going on. Lockup periods, how things have progressed, because 
it looks like this is a you know token generating event, the TGE. Um, I think that's already passed. I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah. So, where are yes. we? We've moved past um, that phase that was in 2018 when we initially sort of jumped on the journey, published the white paper, started building. So we've been building now um, for the last three years, um, and Aaron hit it on the head. You know, we've been just been focusing on building tech, building tech, and um, all the adoption we've seen to date is really just proof that this stuff can be delivered. It can scale to a certain level, and it's now ready to start pushing some buttons and getting some profile out there. Um, the, the core to the token is um, that it drives the incentivized node network. So the fundamental piece in the silo project and what the silo token is there for is what we're deploying as a network, um, a decentralized communications network. So unlike your, your mainstream um, Facebooks or centralized messengers of the world, um, we don't have any central server that stores and facilitates communications. We actually operate um, off a decentralized network of nodes and we released our um, phase one node architecture um, just before Christmas. Um, and what we've got now is our early developers launching nodes um, and pushing through to our next phase. We're going to deploy that out so that any user um, can jump on board and host a node um, and actually facilitate communications on behalf of their networks um, and their clusters as they grow. So instead of think about instead of um, setting up you know, to us, you know, AWS servers around the world will have users being able to set up and run um, nodes that will facilitate the communications and increase the performance of the network um, all around the world. So as we get more users coming into the platform, the performance is going to improve as opposed to the inverse um, ratio with the current um, infrastructure setups. And where the token comes in um, is that that's going to be the key piece driving people hosting and running nodes as it will be a mechanic um, to enable them to facilitate communications and earn and receive for providing that, that processing um, power to the network um, based around um, enabling the communications around the world. I think this is a really, a really important point is that, um, you know, decentralized infrastructure only works if there's an incentive for people to run infrastructure. Um, so if we want a private, secure communications platform for the world, we have to be incentivized to contribute infrastructure to that. And the silo team's um, token is to is in, uh, is enabling that incentivization for both the people who use the app and the people who host the infrastructure. Dorian made a really yeah. interesting point there around this inverse relationship between number of nodes and performance. I think that's an undervalued um, aspect of the um, silo protocol. Most blockchains performance gets worse the more nodes you add to the network. And, um, and because it's got to synchronize data between more entities. Um, the way that the silo protocol has been designed is to improve the performance of the network, the more nodes you add. So the more people who get out there and start hosting infrastructure, the faster it is, the more storage there is. So you get this kind of compounding effect of user experience as well as decentralization. Excellent. You know what? Uh, we touched briefly on that, but that's probably another video uh, in and of itself to set up yeah. nodes and for all those things. We will circle totally. back around on that one, no problem. So it looks like all those tokens are uh, unlocked. I think there's a pretty pretty high uh, supply, maybe around, I think, I want to say 10 billion. Am I wrong? Yeah, Ten correct. Billion. Okay, yeah, a lot of tokens out there, but I think what you guys are trying to do is pretty ambitious globally to really get things done. Speaking Speaking of which, there was this very uh, initial part when we, when we did the video, there was a, uh, a comment. It says, this is silo is smart money, end to end smart money for governments, businesses, and consumers with everything that's, that's going on with El Salvador and Paraguay. Talk to us real quick, because when I heard governments, my, you know, my ears perked up. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So there's, 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 there's two elements there um, we can jump into. One is um, it, it's it's bringing that use case in for potential governmental application, but also um, there, there's a bunch of things that we're working on on the corporate side in relation to. So it's in relation to using um, digital assets for things that fiat or you know dumb money can't actually do yet. Um, yeah. You know the, the aspects of programmable money, so the ability to do things like fluctuate the value. Um, 
of money or an asset at different times of the day to, to drive drive traffic or customer interest in, in corporate retail out, outlets, for example. Uh, but then also the ability to see where these assets end up and how they benefit the economy. Um, you know, a key example there would be, you know, government stimulus. You know, we're all yeah. aware there that the stimulus checks went out all around the world last year and they you don't know where the money exactly ends up, how it's used and how it benefits the economy. Um, we were able to use the, cons the, the elements of programmable money and digital assets to um, actually provide links there and go, hey, look, this went out, this is, this is where it landed, um, and this is the areas of the economy that it actually benefited. It wasn't just cash out and taken to the, the casino um, from that kind of piece. So there's a few areas we're working on there on the um, government and corporate side. Obviously, everyone knows government, um, it's a very slow process. We're, we're, we're doing two things. One is helping them understand the technologies. Um, you know, they're sold on the benefits. Um, and then it's just going through that process of, you know, how do we then bring it through, um, you know, risk mitigation, um, get their understanding around it. But this out, our Salvador stuff's amazing for getting it on the radar. Yeah, exactly. I think, um, I think the key thing is you hit it on the head earlier, which is um, Silo is a super app. So once you've got that platform foundation of a, of a strong network, the privacy features, the integrated wallet, then you can start to layer applications on top of that. And the types of applications you can layer on are, you know, unlimited. Um, and these, these pushes into the corporate and government sector um, are really come down to the fact that you can enable this pro programmable money in an environment that's easy for an everyday user to pick up. It's not some new kind of fandangled experience. They're actually used to a, a WhatsApp or something, a WeChat already. And yeah. so you kind of building on that, but adding an element to it. Yeah, and that is that is the strange thing. Remember in the old days, we, I mean, when the internet was first coming out and you had to actually like use a browser, it wasn't like using a browser yeah. today. It was tough. Yeah, 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 yeah. A little yeah. bit coding. But like with this, like when I was using the app, I was like, oh, that's just like, that's just like WhatsApp. And I had yeah. no idea. It did not feel like blockchain or any kind of yeah. like digital type of thing. I'm like, that, and that's, that's, the whole the whole barrier. Once you remove that, I think things are running wrong. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Thanks for answering that question. There's two more things that I had to go up to. First of all, when we talked about your user growth, I think it was in uh, Q, I wanna say Q2 2019, you were at 50,000. Q3 2019, you doubled. And then you were at 200,000. I think the last one that I saw was Q4, no, uh, Q3 2020. So as far as users right now, where are we at roughly? Uh, and how things have grown because I'm a big believer in Metcalf's law, and then the, the more yeah. you grow, the more things actually grow. I think that the project will grow. So where are we here? I think we're There's close to double again, right? Please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're floating around the um the, the half a million mark right now. Uh, but sort of as Aaron Aaron said before, we've been focusing on building, building, yeah. building, make sure the stuff works, prove it can scale to a certain extent, and we're about to move into I guess what we'd call a, an exposure phase. Um, we've got a couple of pretty big moves. Um, uh, uh, happening under this behind the scenes. Um, it's not just your front face marketing, it's actually getting the right relationships in place to get some really um, legit exposure in the right way um, through, through partnership networks, um, as opposed to your traditional marketing approach, which you're pretty excited about. So think about where we are now is sort of, we've just you know proven this, the, the, the stack and the functionality and then it's usable and people like it. Um, and we're now gonna start getting into, yeah, exposure mode. Exactly. And, and before Aaron, before you talk, I, there's one, one point I want to make, and that is that you guys are doing the exact opposite of what a lot of people are doing in crypto and digital asset world, which is you're making a product that actually works and doesn't break and then doing the, the marketing. It seems like, especially yeah. in the DeFi space, we're doing the exact opposite. So this makes a lot of sense. Uh, that's for sure. And then Aaron, yeah, what... we're, 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 it's, a, it's a uniquely Kiwi thing that we, um, we're a, a bit self deprecating. Yes. Yeah. Um, and so we tend to go and do stuff and then talk about it as opposed to kind of hype and then, you know, maybe deliver. You see, this, <laughs> this is, I, I would always give grief when, when I first got into, into crypto, I'd always give grief to grief to the Cardano community. Cause I'm like, what are you guys doing? You guys writing all these papers just cause I, as an entrepreneur, I just throw stuff at the wall and whatever sticks, I'm like, that works. But of course, when you're doing that with like DeFi or like a, a super app like this, you gotta make yeah. sure it actually works. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. And then lastly, uh, Doreen, you hinted at this. So anything that you can reveal on this show about what are the big <laughs> upcoming things? And of course, I don't want you to divulge anything that you can, but if you got something, it'd be great to, to, to hear. 
Um, th th there's a couple of, um, uh, you know, more obvious features uh, we've got coming out that you would have seen in our roadmap if you check that out on our website. Um, but there's one particularly um, significant move we're looking to make in the background that's positioned to take us from where we are now um, to much more uh, mainstream exposure. Um, unfortunately, I can't dive into the details, but it's a really exciting piece for us um, that could, you know, leapfrog us in terms of how long it could take us to get the traction we wanted to get. Um, and it was, it was an opportunity that um, sort of came to us through what we've been working on the last six months in particular. Um, and it's, it should see the light of day um, in the not too distant future. Um, on, on the, on yeah, the I, I, <laughs> I just want to add, I want to add to that. There's actually like four big things coming, coming on stream with the silo team around um, adoption. And the reason we're being cagey about this is because the people, the people in the organizations involved are serious organizations. So we don't want to kind of ruin or screw up those, um, those relationships by kind of giving too much away. But, but uh, there's some very, very interesting world first type stuff happening. Sounds good. Yeah, I always ask these, these tough questions at the end. I always try to bombard it. Like last time I had, uh, <laughs> I had Steve Ehrlich, you know, from Voyager on. I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, no one's watching. It was like a 10,000 live stream. I'm like, no one's watching. And he's like, I can't. Man, I can't play. That's, that's <laughs> so guys so for, so first of all thanks so much for coming in you've answered all my questions i appreciate it before we take off any last words of wisdom for people in the crypto space moving forward yeah i think that like the only thing i have to say is like um you know look for those gems where um the team have done the hard work they haven't gone out and tried to make a quick buck they're working on the fundamentals you know the technology is strong there's a lot of shit going around at the moment and our industry, you know, is exciting because there's lots of innovation, um, but also it's risky because, um, you know, people ape into things and, um, and in the long run, in the long run, the, 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 the tortoise wins the race, you know, you've got to eventually have strong fundamentals, strong technology, strong networks, and that will drive value in the asset. Always fundamentals. And Dorian? Yeah. I don't understand. Yeah, think, think meta, don't get too pigeonholed into the specific components like this. This whole industry is moving to, to solve some of these major issues we've got going on right now as well. And every you know project that has merit right now that with strong fundamentals, like get in behind those, support those projects. We're building a big beast here um, and it needs to come in a lot of components. It's not what's gonna be the winner. We're currently, the pie is growing right now. We're not trying to grab slices of the pie and it's like, um, yeah, we're, Get behind it. Yeah, <laughs> just, just wait five years. What, what we're doing now is gonna, gonna seem like child's play. All right, gentlemen, yeah. thanks for showing up and answering the questions, really appreciate it. Let's jump right back. All right, that's it. So I hope that answered a bunch of questions. I mean, it helped out me out a lot. If you are interested in the Silo project, there are links below for the websites and of course, where you can actually purchase the Silo token, uh, which you can always find on uh, CoinGecko or any other place like that. So if you uh, like the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. On Dan Clips, we only do things that are um, advancements in crypto and digital assets and uh, project reviews. Now, if you're looking for just daily news and things that are going on day to day in the crypto world, which is uh, expansive, go over to Digital Asset News, which is our main channel, and the link is also in the description. And that's it for today. So uh, thanks for watching, we appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.